Hey, how's it going everybody? It's your pal Impossible here. Today we're checking out Besiege because they just added a new block and this is called the Build Surface Block. And this is experimental, but this is the first time you can kind of create custom meshes in this game. You're not limited to like a very particular block. Like I, you know, normally you just have to put down things like this. It's a set shape, it's a set size, and the only thing you can change really is the scale of it. Well, not anymore. Nowadays, you can build this build service, and I'm going to show you guys real quick how this works out. So you can make either three or four points. So we're going to we're going to do both. I'm going to make four points here. We're going to make a, just a regular square. There we go. That is a regular square. If I want to make a triangle, I can do the same thing, but only use three points. So we go from here to here to here, and then you go back to the first point. Boom, you got a triangle. All right. Now these things also have special, uh, just real quick. You can also pick one of these moves. Like let's say I don't want that point right there. Maybe I want that point way over here, or maybe I want it over here. It doesn't matter. The whole thing will move. You can move that point or you can even move the plane on the outside here. So let's say I want this to have a little bit of angle. Boom. It's got some angle. You know what? I want this one to have some angle too. Boom. There you go. Now you got like an arrow spearhead kind of shape here going on. This is something we could never do before. I think this is going to open up creating very beautiful looking machines on vanilla that you could never do before. You always had to use mod packs. And I think now we're going to be able to do some really cool things just sticking with vanilla. All right. So this uh, I, basically that's a basic idea of how this works. Uh, let's go into the options here real quick. Go in here. So now we can change how it looks. So wood is the kind of default one, but you can also make this glass. So look right now we can look through it. That's just default glass. That's all there is to it. So uh, if you want to have windshields and stuff like that, this is great for that. If you wanted to, you can even make the glass thicker. So let's, what scale are we looking at here? Oop, wrong scale. Let's put that back to one. Uh, it's probably at a Y scale. Nope, it's not. It's definitely the Z scale. Of course, it's the last one I check. So if you want the glass thinner, we can go like, this is not working like I thought it would work at all. I'll be honest with you. But we can change the scale of how thick it is. I think it's because it's at a weird angle that it's doing weird things like that. Uh, but it's definitely thicker than it was. You know what? Let me, let me stop playing with this for a second. Let me put it at a regular angle so it's less confusing. All right, let me grab this. You come back this way. Be on a regular angle with things so I can stop making myself look silly on the internet. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. So you see, now it works like you'd expect. So if we want a thicker glass, for like safety glass, windshield or something, we have it. If we want really super thin glass, we can have that too. It's, it's basically just a shell that you can freeform manipulate, which I think is absolutely amazing. And uh, these also have aerodynamic properties if you want them to. Uh, possibly not on the uh, wood part. Maybe only if it's wood. Yeah, it only has aerodynamic if it's wood, apparently. Otherwise, it just acts like a regular thing. And you can toggle that on and off. But the cool thing about this is now you can make wings that actually look like wings and make them custom for yourself and have, you know, the actual proper curvature on them to actually have them work properly. All right, so that's the big thing with this update. If you're looking, if you're wondering how build surfaces work, that is it. Now I'm going to hop into the uh, a couple of the new blocks that I never really got into, and that is the uh, angleometer and the speedometer, which came out a little while ago, right after I did my giant, you know, logic guide for, for things and... Uh, Let's just get over to that. I'm going to go over real quick how they work if, you, if, you know, if you've never done it before. If you do know how they work and you're only here for the build surface stuff, have a good day because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm done with that for now. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, but let's get on to the new angle, I mean the uh, older blocks that, that I haven't quite covered yet. So let's see here. we got an angleometer. Let's start off with this. This one will be an easy one to work with. Basically, this one triggers... Uh, if this arrow here enters the red zone and it changes based on how things are angled. Let's make a, it looks a very simple contraption here. Uh, let me see, we'll go into uh, we've got a steering block. And one of these. There we go. Flip it around. And we'll just put it on the floor. If, I'm probably going to pin this to the floor to be honest, just so I don't have to mess with stuff. Uh, let's get some blocks. We'll put a big old block like this. Sure, why not? We'll make it bigger. It'll just be more fun that way. Uh, let's put a grabber on here. Where the grabber's at? There we go, grabber. And we'll put a rocket on here. Where the rocket's at? 
There we go. That's a rocket. Let's turn it like that. All right, that should essentially work. I think this fires off of T. It fires off of T, apparently. Okay, so we'll have this when it triggers. Go T. Right there. And basically, when do we want this to trigger? That's going to be where the red zone is. Where I'm going to want this to trigger is probably right around in here. Because as this tilts back, the arrow is going to go this way. Well, more like the whole thing is going to go that way and the arrow is going to keep pointing up. If it's a little confusing, it's okay. I'm going to show you exactly how this works here. So let's bring this up. We're going to start eh, there-ish. Eh, let's go. I'm kind of doing things the wrong way. Hold on. Eh. Let's start like this. Bring the max. Oh my god, I'm doing everything wrong. There we go. Something like this. Maybe. Anyway, we'll see how this goes. What is the key for this? Uh, left and right. That's fine. Uh, this should... Do I have this doing the right button? I do. Okay. So now the plan is, when this starts, after I pin it, I have to pin it real quick. I'm sorry, I usually have these builds... Uh, you know, already pre-planned, but this one was just so simple. I figured I could just do it on the fly. Where is the stupid pin button? There we go. You are now pinned, good sir. All right. So now, when I hit the button, and this arrow points to this red area, which I just defined in the options here, this should shoot. Uh, except for it won't. Well, it will shoot, but I forgot to set. I forgot to set the grabber to the same button. So you have to be T as well, good sir. And uh, there we go. We should be good now. So let's watch it happen. And it worked! We shot a thing! Let's let's get that going real quick. Maybe we'll get a little bit better view. It's, it's hard to get a view where you could see that and the thing go off at the same time. Maybe like here-ish. So if it goes down all the way, there it goes. That's how that works. This is the angleometer. I've seen people do really good with uh, with this, using it for things like trebuchet. When you want to get the perfect trajectory on it, you have to wait until it's right in the same you know perfect spot. It also seems to be applicable for this, so this could work as well. The next one we're going to oh my god, can I just delete this please? There we go. Uh, next one we're going to work on the speedometer, and we're going to get something simple going. I don't know which which thing I'm going to use here. Hopefully, I just have a basic car here. I call this my best vehicle. I don't remember ever making it, but hopefully it's really good with a name like that. Uh, some of these builds that I've had for a long, long, long time. Uh, let me see. Let's let's make something here. Uh, let's well, let's first let's add a speedometer right here. That's our speedometer. And uh, what are we gonna do with this? We're gonna first we're gonna invert it, and I want you to go off. Say when you're 50. I don't I don't really know what the speeds on this are. Uh, we're just gonna have to play it by ear and we're gonna hit Y when it goes. I inverted it because I want it to We're gonna be using boosters if we're below a certain speed So essentially I want it to keep putting out a signal until we reach a certain speed The non-inverted variation of this would be that it wouldn't put out a signal until it reaches that speed And I'm just you know turning it around a little bit. All right, so let's add Something visual here so you can see what exactly is going on. I'm gonna go with a flamethrower. I think those are you don't get much more visual than a flamethrower, to be honest. And, uh... Actually, no, I, I lied. I want to do something else. I want to do a steam, uh... I'm going to do steam jets here. So then we're going to go like this. Like that. I think these are Y by default, aren't they? They are. Uh, we're going to set that to hold the shoot. Hold the shoot. There we go. We're just going to have to add in a fire thing here. And I usually just use the, uh... The torch, like so. I think we just have to put it in a little bit. They don't. They always, they always uh, extinguish themselves if you leave it right there. But I think one end works better. So there we go. Like I said, we're auto boosting because they, uh, the speedometer is inverted and we're going too slow. Let's go forward. Hopefully we hit the speed limit and it shuts off. Wouldn't you know? We can't go fast enough in this car to get it to shut off. All right, maybe I should have uh, maybe I should have changed that. Let's make it make it go a little bit slower. I don't even know what the uh, what's let's say I don't know. How, it'd be good if I had a speedometer to know how fast I was really going. Let's make it really simple. Let's bring it down to like nine or ten. Now hopefully I'll be able to reach that speed. There we go. We got going a little bit. It shut off. So basically this is like a booster to get you going. So it's going because we're going so slow. I start going. Oh, it turned off. We reached, this, we reached the speed limit. Let's slow down. It kicks right back in. 
All right, that's how it goes. We can do it the other way so you can... So now it, I'll stop inverting it. So now it'll only go once I reach 10 miles an hour. So you see it's off. And now I start going. Oh, we're going 10 miles an hour. Time to boost. All right, and that is basically it. That's the uh, angleometer. There's one right before this. This is the speedometer. This is how you use these blocks. They're very simple. Hopefully it's been useful to you guys. And uh, the build surface I'm very excited about. That's a brand new thing. Just came out in today's patch. So uh, I'm looking forward to what everyone's going to do with that. Maybe we'll make a video show showcasing the power of the new build service. And maybe you guys will have some cool creations I can show off. Who knows? So I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is Besiege. If you're interested, I'll have a link down in the description. If you guys are new to this channel, this is what I do. I play indie games every day on the internet for your enjoyment. So if you like this video, thinking, hey, maybe I'd like to see more of this guy, why don't you guys go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Click that bell icon so you know when I put out new content. Smash that like button. Leave a comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.